welcome to Straight Talk About Carbon, a content partnership with Agoro Carbon Alliance on Brownfield Ag News. I'm anchor reporter Megan Grebner, and with us today for our first episode is Anastasia Pavlovic. Uh, hello. Hey, Megan. This is going to be a really cool topic and a really cool series that we're going to uh, do over the next few weeks. But I want to, before we get into some of the nuts and bolts and maybe the things that get really interesting, let's start first with a little background about Agoro Carbon Alliance. Yeah, absolutely. So Agoro was started by Yara International, which is one of the world's largest fertilizer manufacturers. They're headquartered in Norway. Um, so I, I joined as part of our digital farming precision ag sort of team came from the ag tech space. Um, and, you know, over the last few years, you know, Yara's historically been this, you know, big fertilizer production and sort of like logistics company globally, um, looking at how do we reduce different types of emissions, of course, internally on the production side. So Yara had made many green ammonia um, and different types of investments to kind of adjust our own internal emissions. But then there was this ask to think about how does the precision ag and the data component play into what happens on field. So farther out across all of the geographies that we play in, which are many professional farming and, and smallholder as well. And so the idea was, you know, how do we look more at that sector and how do we think about how we help farmers to make some of these changes, um, especially when you think about the nitrogen pieces, obviously that's close to our heart. Um, adapting your nitrogen programs. How do we help people do that? So that was kind of how Agoro got started. And now we have programs in several countries, um, including the U.S., to work on helping our farmers um, make, make changes and turn those changes into assets. I think it's really interesting because carbon is such a, a hot topic. And whether we're talking about agronomically um, in, in ways to reduce our carbon footprint, but also increase our sustainability and production agriculture. Uh, it's also likely going to be a big part of the farm bill conversation as we look ahead to 2023. So this isn't something that's going away. As you look at kind of the goals, what do you want to help farmers accomplish when it comes to understanding carbon and having a role and finding some additional revenue in that carbon space? Yes, I think one of the really important things to note is, you know, farmers and ranchers have been doing these things for a long time in many ways, right? Um, they're ultimate stewards of, of their land. They think about how do we preserve this and keep this a great system for, for many generations. Um, I think that there are places, depending on where you go, and this gets even crazier when you zoom out and look at the whole world, um, there are many places where things like no-till are more and less common for different reasons. Adoption is different for different reasons. I think looking at where are the places that we can help adoption to some of these things, yes, there are people who have been doing it for 20 years, but there's still people who you know, haven't seen the benefits don't really know what it means for them, or they know that it's risky and expensive and it's hard to figure out. So really looking to be kind of like a partner in making those shifts, they have to be practical. So I think we have to have systems that help people reduce their risk when they're implementing them and help them implement so that they have successful results. So I think that's a, a kind of big focus is just making the shift and making it work. I think it's really interesting too, because it's, it's, the conversation in agriculture really has kind of shifted in, in the last few years. And as we talk about this, there's a lot of information coming at farmers from every different direction. So as you sit down with them or you maybe engage with them, what do they ask you? What are their big questions and what do we want to make sure they know uh, when it comes to carbon programs in addition to uh, what Agoro Carbon Alliance does? Yes. So one of the things that a lot of our farmers, especially ones who you know haven't engaged much with the programs yet, so they're really in the early phases of learning, they ask about the duration. You know, a lot of these programs are five, 10, 15 year programs, and they really want to understand why, rightly so. They want to understand, is it risky for me? What, what happens if there's weather changes? I think a really important thing generally to remember is I really believe that the, um, the existence of these types of financial systems that we're starting to create are going to allow people 
it, um, it makes it easier to look at this longer term horizon because you're removing some of the risk associated with the short term. So I think for a lot of people, they, they aren't questioning the benefits of the practices in the long term, but they know that over the first three years or four years, it takes time to adjust to doing it and it takes time to see results. And so um, the important thing there with the duration is that the buyer communities and the investment communities that are looking at helping farmers pay for these changes, the duration is part of the value to them. So a lot of farmers have asked me, could it this just be like a one-year contract that I can, you know, renew? And, and that's completely fair question. The challenge is that from the buyer community, they really want that 10-year or more duration because that gives this valuable permanence that the soil won't be disturbed and changed. Um, and so I think the good side of thinking about that duration is that it's actually a much more guaranteed structure to receive payment when you're in. Um, and there's a beauty to that. You know, you have like a price floor or a guaranteed annual payment that you're going to get for that time. Um, and so I think there's there's like a really good side of the coin when you start to think about that too. So duration's a big one. Um, other things I would say really related to pricing, I think because this market is so early, a lot of people ask me about like regulation and standardization. So, you know, at first they ask, wait, like, so there isn't a governing body that, you know, sets a price. It's not really a commodity yet. It's not a regulated market yet in this case. Um, so, you know, what does that mean in terms of pricing? What's the price per ton? I think very important things farmers can ask as they're navigating their process um, are things like, it's not just the carbon ton price. It's how do you engage with when you get paid? and how that's structured. Because it's not just about saying that you'll get blah carbon price if that doesn't really matter if you don't get any of it until year five or year 10, you need to understand a little bit more of the details of how that's structured. And so I think digging in a little bit more on the pricing structures as opposed to just a number that's per ton or per acre is really important because it is not apples to apples. Everybody's program is different. Do you, I'm sure that there are, are questions and there's a lot for farmers to, to take in on this. When we talk about this, so this isn't just a submit your questions to a website, call a phone number. Agoral Carbon Alliance actually has on the ground folks that can help answer those questions and facilitate that conversation and direction, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I do believe that as this becomes more and more popular and farmers get more and more used to the different ways that they can kind of monetize these practices, it, it will be more digital if you want it to be, right? Like I can see it going that direction in the next five to 10 years. Um, but today I think it's new. It's a complicated space. It isn't intuitive for, for everybody. And a lot, for a lot of people, they've never heard about it or explored it before. So there's a big educational aspect that needs to happen. And I believe that the only way to do that in a really high quality way is by having people that are local to our farmers regions who understand farming in that place and can really speak to, this is exactly what this means on your farm. Here are the other farmers that we've talked to in this area. And like, here's some of the things they're doing. Um, it, it helps make it a little bit more tangible. And you can ask your questions to like a real person who's an agronomist who knows what you're going through. So let's talk about coverage area. Uh, when you look at where uh, you have folks located or where you're working with farmers, uh, what part of the U.S. or is it all across the U.S.? Yeah, so we have um, from as far west as Washington State, and we have a, a group of people that kind of cover Plains and Pacific Northwest, um, down into Colorado, all across the Corn Belt and Plains and with a concentration kind of in the, in the central part of the states, um, a pretty significant size group in Texas and Missouri, Kansas area. Um, and then we have a few people around the Arkansas, Kentucky, down to the Delta and Florida. So we have a, a pretty good, good swath. And I think at least enough that we have somebody who is relational to any farmer that we come, come up with in the US. When you look at where uh, the carbon programs are today and, and what uh, Agoro Carbon Alliance is doing today, 
where do you want to see it move and how do you want to see it? Uh, what type of, I guess, what type of paths do you want to see it move forward in, in the coming years? I, I definitely think there's a, you know, there's a kind of chapter of this in every part of what we do. I think on the agronomic side, I very much want to be one of the thought partners for farmers all across the country and in our other geographies of what it means to make these changes. How do you think about your soil health? Um, our guys on the ground are so, every time I'm out with them going anywhere in any part of the States, so impressed by their knowledge and depth in like what it means for soil health to do some of this stuff. So I think agronomically, that's one. I think there's a whole depth of things into nitrogen management, tillage, all the new products that will start to come and develop as part of these markets that will be exciting to think about helping farmers use. So I think the agronomic thing is one, um, you know, you asked about like more than kind of websites and tech. I think the tech piece is another big one, not just how farmers navigate and do they have more ways to kind of get in touch with us and be served by us, but also um, in the monitoring side, um, looking at modeling carbon over time. I think the tech piece has the potential to really make this much easier to serve and to um, participate in as the farmer. So I think the tech angle is a big one. Um, and then in terms of the kind of like carbon as the buzzword, I think it sounds trite and lame, but it's so much more than just carbon today. I think carbon is the asset that we are getting closer and closer to being able to have creative ways to monetize. But I think this will go the same way in terms of N2O and water quality. Um, there, there are going to be, you know, biodiversity. We are going to have this system that helps us think about the best way to manage any given part of land. And it's going to go way past carbon. And so I'm so excited to see this be one market that kind of starts us on that journey. It really is kind of uh, wide open spaces when you look at the possibility, not just in the technology and the sustainability aspect of it, but really for farmers and ranchers uh, across the country as well. Absolutely. No, it's it's so exciting. Um, and I, I you know every farmer, no matter like what the questions are, what their concerns are, I it is such a it is the start of many opportunities that I think it can be scary. They're new. There's lots to learn, but I really believe that like this is going to open a myriad of opportunities for the different types of farmers we see across across the US and Canada. Um, and it's something to be excited about. Anastasia, thank you so much for your time today. It's really been a pleasure getting to know you and hearing more about what Agoro Carbon Alliance is doing. If folks want to find out more information, what's the best way for them to do so? Our website, agorocarbonalliance.com is the best place to kind of see and reach out. Um, you can read some things. We have our knowledge hub that has a bunch of info about the practices in soil health um, from many of our experts out in the field. Um, you can also check out our social media. We have our Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram pages that a lot of people follow, especially for events. Um, we're at a lot of regional events this year looking to connect with farmers in their local area. So you can always find out more about those on the social media and come see us. But yeah, lots of lots of good ways to, to reach out. Anastasia, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Megan. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.